Professor Ye. Good to see you again. Good to see you. Congratulations. Thank you. Class mark AD. This mm. test can bring people with accuracy to test Alzheimer as high as 96 percent. Mm. Wow. Do you know you have saved a lot of lives and a lot of families? <laughs> yes. So tell me more about it, how it works. So uh, my research team, we developed this blood test that can provide an early diagnosis of Alzheimer's disease. So for the disease, actually, um, there are changes in the brain pathology uh, many years before the uh, onset of the clinical symptoms. So we work hard to develop this uh, blood test that requires a very small amount of blood, like one drop of blood. Yeah. We'll be able to perform the test and give a, a very accurate diagnosis of the condition of the individual. Mm -hmm. For example, whether the individual is healthy mm -hmm. or has uh, low risk or medium risk or high risk of getting the disease mm -hmm. years later, like five to 10 years later. Wow. So the, the, bl the blood test is, is highly accurate. Uh, 96% for Alzheimer's disease. Uh, and very recently, we actually can uh, provide a diagnosis even earlier than Alzheimer's disease. For example, if the individual has mild cognitive impairment, mm -hmm. our blood test can also uh, provide a diagnosis you know, with an accuracy of about 87%. Wow, that's really <laughs> amazing because this is a major disease for a human being, I mm -hmm. think, for anyone age above 40 years old. I'm sure many people will come up to you and say, Professor, yeah, how can I get tested? <laughs> <laughs> Actually, I want to get tested, <laughs> just well, to prevent. Yeah. Actually, um, the, the test is now available in the clinics in Hong Kong, uh, and we have a former startup. The university actually encouraged uh, the establishment of startups. So we emphasize and we support uh, innovation and entrepreneurship since the establishment of the university. Mm -hmm. So we have a technology transfer center at the university that arranged that, oh. you know, to help us take our research findings from, from the bench to bedside. So, so we can take our research findings uh, and, and take it out of the lab and then uh, implement it and, uh, you know, provide benefit to society. You know, when the relatives notice that their grandma, grandpa, or their parents mm. will not be able to recognize them. Yes. That is really a very heartbreaking moment. Yes. It's really, you know, our, our passion, right? Yeah. You know, how can we contribute to society? How can we leverage our, our research yeah. findings and take it further to translate our findings to, you know, providing, um, you know, either a diagnosis or some treatment options uh, for the afflicted patients because... I'm getting emotional, <laughs> I mean, just by talking yeah. about it, yeah. Yeah, because it really, for this type of disease, it's not mm. just affecting the patients, it's affecting the families, yeah, and the, the, the caretakers and Indeed. loved ones. Yeah. And, and for this disease, it's particularly, uh, you know, Difficult, heartbreaking because because of the memory loss, right. you know, and 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 so, I mean, I've have, I've been working in the neuroscience fields for decades, mm. but uh, uh, you know, I think it was like eight or nine years ago. I I told myself, I said, you know, I really need to do my best to contribute to this devastating disease, okay. uh, in part because of the. The, uh, the prevalence. So globally, yeah. there are about 40 million uh, Alzheimer's disease patients, and it's projected to exceed 100 million by 2050. So this is a, a very, very substantial number. Uh, yeah. And because of the aging population globally, you know, the number uh, is bound to, to increase, right. right? But you know, Professor, what you said from bench to bedside, yeah. it's not easy. It's not like just your work as a researcher. Yes. You have to build a whole ecosystem yes. in order to make people have access to it, yes. like common folks. Yes. How did that happen? Yeah, so f for this particular blood test, uh, it actually started off as my 
PhD students thesis project. So, so he actually did a very comprehensive study. So our group was the first uh, research group that conducted such a comprehensive study to look at the the uh, blood proteins, mm -hmm. uh, comparing Alzheimer's disease patients uh, with the healthy control. So when we look at the, the differences in the expression of these uh, blood proteins, we found that uh, a few hundred of, of the blood proteins out of you know, 1,100 blood proteins, they were altered mm -hmm. in, in the blood of the Alzheimer's disease patients. Then we proceeded to, you know, to, to group them mm -hmm. into different clusters right. and, uh, and then use big data analysis to identify uh, 21 proteins mm -hmm. that we uh, call biomarkers. So these are blood biomarkers that will allow us to come up with a, with a method Mm. Uh, to uh, identify the Alzheimer's disease patients. So but to nail down the 21 is already a big process, yes, isn't it? Yes. How did you discover them or identify them? Were they by accident? Or actually you were doing tests on every one of those? I think that's a tremendous amount of work. Right, so what we did was we used big data analysis to identify these proteins that are regulated mm. or they are change during the disease progression. And so that gave us, you know, the, the, the clues that these are the proteins that represent the, the different biological pathways. Right. Okay, so so leveraging, uh, you know, the identifi identification of these proteins, we validated them uh, based on more than 2,000 individuals yeah. uh, in Hong Kong mm -hmm. through collaboration with clinicians uh, in the hospitals. Mm -hmm. But yeah. that is only nailing down the 21 proteins. Yeah, yes. Not to mention getting the accuracy rate as high as 96. Yes. That is another long process, That's I right. would assume. Yes. I think based on the, the research that we did, we identified these proteins that are closely associated with the disease, mm -hmm. right? And through, through these proteins, we actually can get more insight about the disease mechanisms. Right. So that will lead us to, you know, uh, looking into ways to provide treatment. But based on the proteins alone, we can already uh, build this kind of uh, uh, protocol or methodology yeah. that allow us to develop the blood test with high accuracy. But how do we take this from a laboratory to bedside? So this would require optimizing the test and also validating the test mm. and then setting up this uh, company that would be uh, in charge of uh, implementing mm. the, the blood test for the community. Right. So that's the other part of the ecosystem. So the, for, for the ecosystem to be complete, it requires different components. Mm. First, we need to have funding right, to allow us to do the research. Mm -hmm. And for this, I really, uh, I'm grateful to the funding support from the central government, from the Hong Kong government, and also from the, um, you know, setting up a center in Hong Kong called the Hong Kong Center for Neurodegenerative Diseases. Mm -hmm. So all this funding support and also the platform that, that was set up over the years, including the Stake Laboratory of Molecular Neuroscience right. to allow us to do the work. That's the first step, of yes. course, and then doing the hard work. By students, yes. right? Talented uh, researchers, including students and, and staff in mm. the lab. And so patients. they work as a team. Exactly. Patients. Exactly. So patients, and, and for this, since HAUSD does not have a medical school, <laughs> so I, I had to um, collaborate with clinicians, and uh, and they are uh, very, very uh, supportive. I see. And we work together as a team. So researchers and clinicians working together, uh, and based on the samples they provide to our research team, we could, we could do the validation, we could develop the tests, mm -hmm. right? So again, funding, uh, researchers, including students, uh, uh, scientists and, and clinicians, and then the translation part is critical. And that is achieved, you know, through 
forming startups, you know, uh, university startup, to to help us develop the test to one that can be implemented, right? Uh, you know, for the society, right? You know, what does it say to you when China makes very clearly that new quality productive forces will be the key? For future economic development, yes, would that help you to connect the dots that you've already been thinking for years uh, as an educator and as a scientist? How can you tap into the advantages that there is such a momentum now? Yeah, no, I am truly excited about this uh, this new quality productive forces because it is so visionary and and it is something that again. Uh, Higher education sectors can really contribute mm. because for this to to happen, we have to train talents, we have to have the right ecosystem, and we have to look into the future. Right? right, what kind of technologies can really contribute to that? So this is perfect for for university uh, to to contribute because right on time. Yeah, because this is exactly what we are doing. Right, so. We have to be innovative in our curriculum design. Mm -hmm. You know, how do we train our students? So, for example, we launch Major Plus X, and X means any emerging technology. <laughs> it can be AI, it can be anything. Wow. So we have launched that, and mm -hmm. the students love it because, you know, they have the opportunity to to, to think learn. and yeah, to imagine think. exactly. So now with ChatGPT. We said, well, we just we don't just expect students to memorize what they learn in class, but they have to learn how to think. Today is the International Women's Day, Professor Ye. I really wonder for a, a female scientist, for a great president of a university, for one who has been trying to connect the dots and bring the best talent to work for humans' benefits. Yes. What would be the best gift for you for the day? <laughs> I really uh, would like to see more women joining um, the scientific uh, community. community. Being the first female university president in Hong Kong after more than a hundred years, uh, I'm very much honored, and I really hope that there will be more to come. I think we can make so much contributions to the world together. Uh, together, yes, yes. Professor Ye, I wish that uh, uh, hope come true, and happy International Women's Day to you. Thank you. Thank Same you so much. You.